What drives a king to expand his rule to the very edge of the unknown? Why are his people willing to sacrifice their livelihoods and even their lives for a ruler who sits on an ivory throne? The legends of our ancestors and the greatness they achieved drives us forward. All in Asia have heard of the great Srivijaya Empire, a grand power of the past that ruled all of the Indonesian islands. We dream to one day surpass these legends. In our culture, we hold the Tansil, a tiny mouse deer, the highest among the animals. Foreigners laugh mockingly at our reverence for such a benign creature, but they know nothing of the Kensil's heart. Despite its unimpressive appearance, the Kensil can overcome any obstacle and defeat much larger adversaries through sheer cunning. Its bravery is like that of no other animal. Our people are like the Kansil. Our enemies underestimate and mock us, but we will show them our true spirit. For that reason, the story of our empire's founder, Ayawi Rawaja, is revered among our people. When faced with a Mongol invasion, he built an empire from a tiny village. I heard the story of Arya Wirawaja many times when I was a child. Through the cunning of the Kensil, he defeated both his Javanese overlords and the mighty Mongols. Now, Arya did not do this alone. I have always believed that the gods favored him and his descendants. That is why I, Gajamada, commander of the elite guard of the Majapahit kings, have sworn to serve the royal family until my last breath. My long-standing fear that quarrels within the court would threaten its collapse has come to pass. Treacherous warriors draw their karambits at the palace gates as I speak. A nobleman called Rakrian Kuti has betrayed the king and now lays siege to the royal palace. Fortunately, his treachery has not spread throughout the empire. The prime minister, Ayatada, remains loyal, and we have joined our forces to free the king and crush the rebellion. Let us hope that there is still enough time to save our king. We crushed the rebellion and executed the leaders. To celebrate our victory, the king threw a great festival, and the poets sang of his courage and ferocity in the face of danger. Nevertheless, I am beginning to doubt my king. He believes that he is untouchable and acts immorally, desiring the wives and daughters of his subordinates. Even his most loyal supporters have begun to hate him. Tribuana, the king's stepsister, has even told me that the king now shows a dubious interest in her. With such behavior, it is only a matter of time before something bad will happen to my king. As I feared, our king died this afternoon from an unknown illness. In his stead, Tribuana became queen regent. Her first act as queen was to retire the prime minister and give his position to me. Without hesitation, I swore an oath in front of everyone I would not indulge in any pleasures until I had conquered the entire Indonesian archipelago for the glory of the Majapahit. Even my closest friends doubted me, but I proved my worth. 
One by one, our mighty armies and majestic fleets conquered the surrounding islands. From Bali, the island of the gods, to the old ruins of the Srivijaya Empire, all now answer to the Majapahit Empire, just as I said they would. Time is a cruel mistress as I grow older and older. The queen abdicated so that her son, Hayam Wurik, could take the throne. This does not affect my ambitions. My work is not complete as long as my oath is not fulfilled. Majapahit's navy will go east, towards the small but rich tropical islands of the archipelago. They are as many as the stars in the sky, but they too will recognize my authority and that of Majapahit's rightful king, of course. Never before has an empire controlled so much of Indonesia. The Majapahit Empire is truly blessed, and its reputation spreads. Emissaries from China and India come to our capital, bearing gifts in recognition of our power. All that remains is to take the last remaining kingdom on the island of Java. The Sunda kingdom is a thorn in my side and should not be allowed to exist any longer. My king maintains good relations with Sunda, but I am determined to be rid of them. My oath must be fulfilled. While I was watching the dancers in the royal gardens, a plan came to me that will ensure the downfall of the Sunda. An arranged marriage between my king and one of their princesses will cause the Sunda to lower their guard. I will then force them, under threat of destruction, to submit to my king's rule. It is a plot worthy of the cunning cancel. My king has ordered me to go to Bubat Square in our capital to welcome the princess and escort her and her family to our palace. For my plan to succeed, not even the king can know of the plot. The Sunda will protest, but with their whole royal family in our city, surrounded by my soldiers, they will have no choice but to submit. At first, all went according to my plan. My army surrounded the Sunda royal family, and I ordered them to surrender their weapons. I was convinced that they would comply. To my surprise, instead of surrendering, the Sunda drew their weapons and attacked my army, even though they were vastly outnumbered. I tried in vain to stop the fighting, but the Sunda were destroyed, and my plot crumbled into dust. My own king and his family, the family, that I have spent my entire life serving were disgusted by my actions. When the king summoned me, I could see the disappointment and loathing in his eyes. In tears, he told me that his bride-to-be had committed suicide and that I had ruined the reputation of our empire. Many in the Majapahit Empire wanted me dead. But because of my long years of service, the king spared my life. Instead, I was to resign and to withdraw to a small mansion in the countryside. Death would have been a less harsh punishment than having to live with this shame. And so, here I am, a lonely old man, once ambitious and young, now trapped in this secluded place. I realized that I was not clever like the cancer, but rather greedy and blind, like the animals that it misleads. The assassination of the first king, the removal of the prime minister, all of the schemes that I planned and conspired. I let nothing come in the way of my ambitions, and now I pay the price.